Do you know by the time we were 75, we would have spent 25 years sleeping? That's right, 25 years. That's quarter of our life spent on sleeping. If we're gonna spend quarter of our life sleeping, we might as well just understand how to sleep better to improve our focus in our daily lives. Over the past few years, I've been in a search on a journey to understand better sleep techniques. This is because we find ourselves constantly tired regardless how early we go to bed. Sometimes it's challenging to understand why a full night's sleep doesn't leave us feeling refreshed. In our journey to understand what makes it a restful night, we might be clinging on beliefs and habits we think are helping us out. But what if they're actually doing the opposite? Hey, family, friends, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be delving into the, the world of the sleep science to kinda of clear up some common misconceptions. We're gonna be exploring seven common myths about sleep that might actually holding you back on your journey to a good night's sleep. I believe it's the time that we challenge these myths and some of these beliefs about the way we sleep. Before we begin the video, be sure to be part of our community. Just hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you find it value. Okay, let's get started. Myth number one, more sleep means better sleep. This is actually a widespread belief implies that simply increasing the sleep duration improves its quality. Sleep is actually more complex, involving various of cycles, including the REM and non-REM stages. Think of sleep as a music album with a different song, the songs being at different cycles. Each song cycles has important parts stages it's not about how long you play the album it's about listening to all the important songs like the golden locks not too much not too little sleep is good usually seven to eight hours of sleep is good for most people so good sleep means going through all the sleep songs properly especially the deep sleep and the dream parts it's better to have a short uninterrupted sleep than a deep sleep with a a lot of interruptions. Books like Why We Sleep and podcasts like Andrew Huberman talk about these subjects in the detail. So in Walker's book, Why We Sleep, Walker explains how different stages of sleep contributes to various aspects of our health and well-being. Uh, myth number two, watching TV before bed helps you sleep. This is another common belief that watching TV or using our phones before bed helps us relax and prepare for sleep. But scientific research, including institutions like Harvard, tells us differently. Also, the content on TV keeps our brains too active when it should be calming down for sleep. A research academic paper that I found on Cell Magazine have found that the light from the screen affects our mood and learning. There are also special cells in our eyes that respond to a light and influence these aspects. And so this shows the importance of light exposure into our eyes, especially from screens, affecting us how we feel and think. So stay away from TV, phone, computer, at least for an hour before you go to bed. Myth number three, hitting the snooze button gives you extra rest. So there's another belief that hitting the snooze button and getting a few more minutes of sleep can make you feel rested. However, uh, various resources, including an article from the Sleep Magazine, is hitting the snooze button once or maybe three times bad for your health. An insight from the expert like Dr. Rena Mary. According to Dr. Mary, much of the latter part of our sleep cycle is comprised of REM sleep, which is a restorative sleep state. So if you're hitting the snooze button, then you are disrupting that REM sleep. Dr. Mary continued to explain that we all have a different arousal a threshold during the uh, different stage of the sleep. And if we're disrupting that late stage, the REM sleep, it could cause a fight flight respond, uh, which increases our blood pressure and heartbeats. So basically using simple terms, if you keep hitting the snooze button, but this article is saying that it's like you watching a movie, right? And every time you're at the middle of the movie, it's like you're restarting the movie again, right? That's how it feels like. It's just a never ending cycle. I also found this motivational speaker, uh, Mel Robbins. If you're somebody like I used to be that hits the snooze button, that kills your productivity for at least four hours. Let me explain. Do you have to understand this? The snooze button creates a mental state, a state in your brain that is called sleep inertia. It's so bad it actually has a name. Here's what it is. When you and I go to bed, we sleep in cycles. We sleep in cycles of like 90 to 110 minutes all night long. And right before you wake up, the sleep cycles, they stop and your body goes into a wake up mode. OK, your brain is starting to slowly wake up so that it can start the day. So hitting that snooze button makes the brain re-enter a sleep cycle, leading to a state known as a sleep anorexia. So this stage significantly impacts the brain's decision making, attention and alertness up to four hours to waking. And myth number four, a drink before bed improves your sleep. 
No, I'm not talking about a water. What I'm talking about is alcohol. This is another belief held by many that consuming an alcohol before going to bed can help you fall asleep faster and improve your sleep quality. However, a study done by researchers at the University of Melbourne and reported by the Time magazine shows that this isn't really true. They found that drinking alcohol before sleep might make you fall asleep faster, but the sleep you get isn't as good. So here's what they did on this study. They invited young adults to sleep lab. They give them a drink orange juice mixed with vodka on one night and a non-alcoholic placebo on another night. So while they slept, their brain activities was monitored. It turns out that on the night they had alcohol, their brain showed more mix of deep sleep patterns and patterns that usually happens when you are awake and resting. So this strange mix means that the sleep isn't very restful. It can lead to feeling tired the next day, having headaches and feeling grumpy. So even a drink might seem like helping you fall asleep, it actually messes with the quality of your sleep. So having a drink before bed, you know, now and then, might not be a big deal, but doing it regularly can really have serious impact on your sleep as well as overall your health. So as I was looking to this study, it actually reduces your REM sleep. Remember, the deep sleep, the, the sleep that helps you get into your dreams and stuff. So less REM sleep means waking up tired, and unfocused. Let's look at my favorite podcast, Andrew Huberman, uh, when he had the author, uh, Why We Sleep, uh, Matthew Walker. So let's say um, somebody uh, enjoys a glass of wine or two with dinner and they eat dinner at 7 p.m. Is that likely to disrupt their sleep at all? Let's just sort of, let's make this a, a series of gradations. Um, and the answer is, is yes. Uh, um, I think once they just looked at a single glass of wine in the evening with dinner and I would be untruthful if I didn't just simply say it has an effect and we can measure that uh, in terms less of less REM sleep. sleep less REM sleep and one of the fascinating studies I can't remember what dose I think they got them close to a standard um, illegal blood alcohol level so maybe they were a little bit tipsy and yes you see all of the changes that we just described um, they sort of lose consciousness more quickly, they have fragmented sleep, and they have a significant reduction in REM sleep. But what was also interesting, because REM sleep, as we spoke about before, is a time when some hormonal systems are essentially recharged and refreshed, growth hormone being one of them, there was well over a 50%, 5 zero drop in their growth hormone release during alcohol. So while you might think alcohol might help you fall asleep, is really not giving you the quality of sleep that you need. Myth number five is sleeping in on the weekends fixes sleep debt. There's another myth that suggests that if you don't get enough sleep during the week, you can make it up for it by sleeping more on the weekends. But the sleep research tells us it's not really that simple. If you regularly sleep less than seven hours a week, you are building sleep debt. You know, this happens due to daily activity like work, watching the TV, so on and so forth. You might think sleeping on a weekend or taking a nap but really, this is not a complete solution. Some of these researchers tells us that it takes more than a couple of days to kind of finally catch up with you if you've been losing the sleep. So if we're really not getting enough sleep, that could have a huge effect on our daily life activities, such as, you know, remembering things and and uh, and then just doing a simple task. Uh, instead, I looked at 56 people to see how they sleep more on the weekends that affect on the brain. They found out that sleeping more on the weekends can improve your tension and brain activity. However, sleeping at a different times on the weekends compared to uh, weekdays can actually make your attention worse. So this tells us that having a regular sleep schedule is really important even on the weekends. So myth number six, exercising before bed is actually a good idea. So exercise before bed, modern exercises like yoga, stretching, or just walking at least an hour before bed is really not actually bad. But vigorous exercises during the day should be avoided by or close to a bedtime. All right, guys, we're almost done. Here's the last myth. Myth seven. You can train yourself to need less sleep. The idea that you can train your body at its best with less sleep is not true. Continually getting insufficient sleep can result in insufficient health problems. As highlighted in an article such as The Hazards of Sleep Deprivation, founded in the National Health Journal, a chronobiologist at the Pennsylvania Transportation Institute after conducting study at the Penn State and Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, found out that adapting to a less sleep in a short period of time is not possible for most people. Their study showed that even with the increase of the sleep hour after a period of sleep deprivation, it takes several days for people to recover from the effect of sleep loss. This research also highlighted that even if it seems like you're getting used to sleep less, 
you're actually performing at lower level without realizing it due to the gradual decline of function. Uh, this research also found out that, you know, your body does not adapt to with lack of sleep. With this kind of a lack of a sleep deprivation, it can hinder your decision making, memory, focus, and cognitive. And over time, this can seriously have you know, huge health effect down the road, including issues in your cardiovascular system, the immune system, hormone production, and mental health. Even if you feel like you're getting used to or sleeping too little, more serious health problem could be developing because of your body's inability to get the rest it needs. So it is essential to prioritize a sufficient sleep as part of maintaining your health overall and well-being. All right, guys, that was the top seven myth that I found that most people kind of talk about it. I want to know what you guys think. Let's get this conversation going in the comments section and let me know what you guys think. And lastly, before I sign up, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up if you got any value of it, and also share with your family and friends who might need some sleep knowledge. Until then, sleep tight and have a sweet dreams.